Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. I believe this will be our week 12 of our installment of our Victory Bible Baptist Youth Weekly Devotion Series on Think About It. So this week, I do apologize. I am late posting on Thursday. Uh, been a really busy week for me, and, and I let today get away from me. Uh, but here we are. So this week's tip, we'll just go ahead and jump right in it. This week's tip, uh, I was reading some things on this, just on tips on helping devotional, and I found this uh, somewhere through the week or last week. But uh, applying the teaching. Sometimes when we do our devotion, we need to apply the teaching. When we read, if it's just one simple verse, is ask some questions. And I wrote down, and I got three questions. I, I was reading some stuff this week, but our, the, the first question was, how is the daily reading relevant to you? So what is God showing you in that daily reading? The, the second thing I, that I wrote down here was, how do you need to change? What is that verse or what is God's word showing you in your life that you should change? And then, and then the third thing was make a declaration of how it applies to you. So we, we look at how it's relevant. We look at what we need to change, and we see how it applies to us. And, and that's what we should do in each devotion. So, <clears throat> as you know, I, I, I say this every week, but I am, I am, I'm looking for our youth, uh, even some of the uh, youth workers in the church, maybe to uh, uh, do some of these devotions also. I uh, Just come and see me if you would like to... Uh, submit one for one of our weekly devotions i would greatly welcome it but we'll get into uh what we got going on here so this week the song of the week and if i've got the right the name of this song wrong i do apologize but it is a song i choir sung i recorded a few maybe a year ago and it's the story that will never grow old <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and get into uh, how we start out each devotional. Let's pray. So, Lord God in heaven, Lord, we thank you once again for the beautiful, wonderful day you've given us, Lord. I thank you for the rain you've given us this today, yesterday, Lord. It's going to uh, springtime here, Lord. It's going to help the grass grow. It's going to make everything beautiful. Trees are blooming. Dogwoods in my yard are blooming, Lord. It's just beautiful, Lord. And that's all by your handiwork, Lord. We want to thank you for that, Lord. I pray that you take this devotion this week, Lord. I pray that you would use it. Help it in our hearts, Lord. Help it work in our hearts, Lord. Show us what you would have us to learn out of this, Lord. What you would have us to pull out of your word, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 
All right, so this week I, uh, I'm in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. And if anybody remembers several weeks ago, and it may have been on a Sunday night or a Wednesday night, I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, Brother Carl Devonport actually preached out of this. I'm going to go, uh, I just kind of, I'm going to go a little different direction of what he preached, and I'm not going to give you the whole chapter 3 as uh, he did. I'm only going to cover, I'm only going to touch the first verse. And uh, I believe there's something wonderful just in the first verse. I do challenge you to get into the rest of Ecclesiastes 3 and read the rest of it. There, that's just a wonderful little chapter there. I uh, studied it uh, probably eight, nine months ago myself and uh, went through it. I, I used a bit of it, I think, in junior church. But uh, let's just look. And what I used in junior church is not what God showed me out of it this past week when I was studying it, something completely different. But uh, in Ecclesiastes 3, 1, it simply says, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. And what God showed me out of this, and I got to studying on it, and I got to reading some 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 stuff on it. <clears throat> so every given year, we have four seasons. Uh, we have spring, summer, fall, and winter. And right now, as you know, we're all in spring. And spring is a beautiful season. Everything's flowering. Uh, it's a it's a season of of new beginnings. We got new growth. We got the grasses turning green. I've got my dogwoods blooming right now my uh, red buds out in the yard they're blooming and uh, farmers they're they're starting to get their fields planted they're st and it's a place to start planting it's a and I in a, st in a place of uh, new beginnings and then we get into the summertime and summer is a time for growth growth and that's where we see you know the the uh, around here we have a lot of corn crops and we see those corn crops growing getting larger and, uh, and and the fruit starting to form on the vines. I've got an apple tree in my front yard this year. I'm hoping, I'm hoping this year I can get some apples off of it. And I'm hoping that uh, through the summer it'll it'll uh, it'll grow. I tried some stuff this winter pruning it back. And but uh, fall time now fall is a time of harvest. You know, uh, around here we have harvest festivals and, and different kind of events like that. But you know, harvest that's when we you know we, we get it. You know, the farmers get out in the fields. They bring in their corn and, and the different things they've grown and and uh, a lot of us plant gardens and, and time to get get the gardens in and, and and my wife she used to can and we'd we'd plant green beans and then in the fall time we was uh we was canning green beans like crazy uh, so then we move into winter and winter's winter's kind of a time for rest and uh you know the farmers if you talk to farmers it's kind of a time for, to rest to kind of catch up and relax so just as God made the seasons and the, and the weather and the yearly, he also give us seasons in our life. Now, now this is what I want you to think about, the seasons in our life. Uh, from the time we are born, being like spring, so it's a, it's a time of a new beginning for us. When we're born, it's like spring. We're, we're new. We're, we're getting ready to grow. We're planted in a family here on earth where we have a purpose, and that purpose is for us to grow. Uh, last week and then a couple of weeks ago when we had the, uh, the um, Youth youth Sunday, uh, we had, I uh, oh, forgot his name, Jeff McCastle, I think it was, and he had that little baby, and he was talking about growth in Christian, and I kind of used that a little bit in junior church last week. I kind of borrowed that a little bit. You know, when we're born, we're a baby. Uh, we have families around us to care for us, to watch over us, to feed us, and to protect us. You know, as young babies, we need that because we, we don't have the ability to protect ourselves. And, and you know, even the young infant cannot feed himself or feed herself. So we, we, uh, we need our families, our moms, our dads, and, and uh, grandmas, grandpas, and, and whatever to, to help us. And like I said, our purpose from that point is to start growing and learning. Uh, then in, in sort of in life, there we get to our summer months, and I kind of and I kind of tag this as our as uh, the years of our youth, where we're still growing and learning, and and we're getting and and we're able to start you know dressing ourselves and you know five you know when we get three four five years old we can dress ourselves a little bit and then as we progress to ten years old we can do those things better we can where uh, we can feed ourselves or learn to cook and 
clean the house and, and we're getting we're getting more independent and learning but as, at those ages we still need help uh, we're still learning but we're learning to do more on our own we're coming we're becoming less reliant on others so there's many different parts of these years like the like the uh, junior years i was talking about you know like five-year-olds six-year-olds seven-year-olds uh preteen years then the teenage years and uh, then the young adults getting into you know 18 to 20 25 maybe <clears throat> and then I, I just kind of this is just what god showed me and i kind of characterize these a little bit and these are kind of things I just wanted to bring out to kind of give you some examples. Uh, so then we get into fall years of our lives. It's, it's like our adult years. We become independent. Uh, we, you know, most of us will be starting families of our own. We'll have jobs. We'll support our families. We're, we're, um, we're uh, teaching, you know, our, our, we're having kids and we're teaching those things we learned. And, and that's kind of something to the fall. And, and I wrote the winter years. Winter is when we get to, get to enjoy the fruits of grandkids traveling, fishing, golf, you know, slowing down a little bit in life. We're not focused on work as much. And, and I like to think that's, that's where I'm at right now as far as, you know, my physical life. I'm able to slow down a little bit. I'm able to enjoy uh, playing with grandkids and, and uh, thinking about getting back into fishing. I don't really want to play golf again. Tried that, but... Uh, uh, we're, you know, me and my wife, Dina, talking about traveling some, and, and we're kind of, that's kind of, I feel like that's where me and my wife, Dina, and we're getting to now. So then I wanted to compare that to our Christian life. So in our Christian life, we're, we have our first birth, that was the birth from our mother, and then our Christian life, when we come, become saved, uh, the Bible talks about being born again. So that is the second birth. Uh, and we as we as young Christians in Christ, we need help and guidance. When we're first saved, we need help and guidance. We need a good Christian family around us. Uh, we need those. We need we need a good church family around us. We need church to help us. We need uh, church people. We need a good preacher. We need all those things around us to help us. But we also know because we're saved, we have a Father in heaven. And through his word and his spirit, he will guide us along the way. And, and as we travel, we travel into summer. And in the summer, just like in our teenage years, we're still learning. We're still growing. We're becoming more knowledgeable. We're becoming uh, you know, young adults as we progress through that. And we should continue to grow. Just like young babies, when they're born, they should always continue to grow. If they're not growing, something's wrong. The same thing in our Christian life. We should continue to grow, and we should always continue to grow. We should grow in knowledge. We should grow in his love, and, and we should you know, begin to show that love to others and others around us. Uh, then we come into the fall years of our Christian life. The fall years is, is as I talked about, in weather or, or in, you know, it's like the harvest. The, the farmers are getting in the field and begin to harvest. And I kind of wrote this, and this is just what God showed me. is It's a time when we become strong in knowledge or, or or more strong in knowledge to the point where we have fruits we can share we should be gathering uh, gaining fruits and telling others about christ and telling others about the love and, and about god's saving grace and and that's that's kind of how i classified the fall season now i wrote the last season would be winter and, and as I talked about winter being a little bit of time of rest and a time of slowing down, time of uh, 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 playing with the grandkids and stuff. Now, uh, heaven heaven is uh, the last season for us would be heaven. And, and that's when we'll be home. We'll go home with the Lord and we'll be with we'll be with him. Um, and uh, and that's going to be, you know, that's our that's our end, end game for our Christianity. That's that's our promise. Heaven. So. Now back to our verse a little bit <clears throat> in Ecclesiastes 3 1 it said and to everything there is a season so I wrote this God gives us different seasons in the life in our life he also gives us time uh, I wrote in Genesis I look you know this is something in Genesis 1 1 uh, it says in the beginning God created in the beginning of what well I think one of the things there's many things that could that meant there but one of them 
That was the beginning of time. That was when our time began. Uh, the Bible, uh, he, he also said in, uh, in Ephesians 1, 4, according to he hath chosen us before the foundation of the world, that when that we should be holy without blame before him in love so talking about you know when we when we become saved we're, we're young christians we're babies in christ we're learning but we also have to realize god chose us to be holy to be without blame god chose us before the foundation of the of the world which was back in genesis 1 1. not only did god create time he chose us at that point and I think that's a wonderful, wonderful thing when you get in and study that out. So before we were ever planted on this earth, before, before I was born 51 years ago, God had a plan for me. He had a plan for me at creation. He, has a, he had a plan for you at the creation in Genesis 1-1. So we were to be born and to grow in the families he put us in and we were also chosen to be to to accept him as our savior and be born again um, as a uh, uh, first peter 2 2 says as newborn babies desiring the milk of the word that ye may grow thereby so when we become saved he said he, he's saying here in first peter that just like newborn babies desire milk we should just we should desire to get in his word and learn and grow so as we begin a relationship him as we begin a relationship with him we should read his word we should pray we should continue learning and we and and by those, all those things we will continue growing so in closing here god has not promised us everything will be perfect and great on this earth but he did say in John 16, 33, he said these things, and this is Jesus speaking. He said, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace, but in the world ye, might, ye shall have tri tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So as we go through life, and even, even as Christians and we're doing everything right, we're going we're gonna to deal with different things in our life. We're going to deal with problems. We're going we're gonna to deal with, you know, uh, um, there's some, there's, uh, our, our preacher right now, little Noah's had his teeth pulled and he's, he's not feeling good. And, and that's one of the things that we'll have to deal with, but God's going to help Noah through it. And God's going to help the preacher through it. And it's going to be, it's going to be perfect and fine. There's, everything's going to be great. And, um, and, uh, but you know, we got some, we got some folks that's having to deal with cancer in our church right now, but, but God is in control. Uh, as he said in John 16, 33, he says, I have overcome the world. He said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Um, we, we, we're praying for each one of those situations, and, and, and God's going to work his miracle through them situations. And, and uh, just remember that. So we have a promise from God. In John 3, in, in John chapter 3, and 15 and 16, it said, Whosoever should believeth on him should not perish but have eternal life so and uh, for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life so that everlasting life that is our that is our winter season we're looking forward to that is a uh, that is our promise that we we will have some tribulations as we go through this time on earth and we're going to have great times here on earth too but uh, whatever God's got planned for us in, in our everlasting life in heaven, I, I couldn't describe it to you. I, I, I don't think anybody could, and we're just going to be amazed when we get there. So I do challenge you this week to take some time, read through a chap Ecclesiastes chapter 3. So think about, think about your life and how God is working in it. And if you follow the plan that God has for you, It'll, it'll, it'll help you. Ecclesiastes, and I will close with this verse here. So in Ecclesiastes 3, chapter 3, verse 14, it said, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, and men should not fear, excuse me, and that men should not fear before him. All right, y'all have a wonderful week, and look forward to seeing you Sunday.